DJ Jazz T. You're watching Mind Power Composition. Stay tuned. I think my musical influences would uh, definitely be from the DJing perspective. I mean, the first time I got into the music was when I heard uh, DXT's cuts on the track Rocket. And from then I knew that was kind of my sound. I always wanted to get into music because I was into I was into sound systems and just electronic kind of stuff and recording stuff off the radio and making the pause button tapes. So that kind of that kind of got me into the whole music thing. It got me primarily into DJing first, and then from there, like having rolled, rolled with loads of MCs, I just the natural progression was to get into production. The first uh, musical production tool that I acquired was a uh, Roland S330, which was a one U rack mount sampler. Had a massive screen and a mouse. Uh, got that in about 1993. Uh, my uh, one of my rapper's cousins was a roadie for Roachford and he had loads of decent equipment and he just had this sampler. Uh, basically the, the thing I liked about it was it had a massive colour screen because it was the production thing was always a visual thing as well as obviously listening as well so from there I guess that's why I always kind of got into the, the software rather than the, the hardware samplers as such. Uh, in, in terms of uh, learning how to produce I pretty much learnt a few things from uh, my friend's cousin uh, but a lot of it was just learning learning for myself you know just thinking of a problem and finding a solution using the tools that were there at the time you know what I mean. Uh, my first sampler I didn't have an operational manual uh, again my friend's cousin pretty much showed me how to use it and uh, again it was like what, what, do you, what do I want to do how much how long the sample's going to be and you could kind of double the sample time because I think there was only 7.2 seconds of sample time and you could like uh, double the frequency well, yeah double the frequency or half the frequency and you'd just get double that so kind of had to work it out for myself really. The first piece of equipment it was a Roland S330 sampler 7.2 seconds of sample time at a big colour monitor so you could do all the editing and stuff on the monitor uh, fully controllable from a mouse so this this was in 1993, so this is one of the first samplers of its type because obviously the NPCs and everything was all pad based and like you had a tiny screen and you'd do everything with the dials and stuff. But this this was pretty much it's very similar to what you know using logic and stuff now. So that kind of got me into that way of working, so to speak. I, I acquired the Roland. Um, I think I borrowed some money. I, I had a job as well, and uh, my friend also sort of came in with me, and we, we we both bought it together. I mean, it cost us about 500 and something quid. In, t in terms of learning how to use it, we'd pretty much learnt while it was in my friend's cousin's studio. So uh, we got it, and straight away we were on it and producing on it, you know, because we, we were just hungry, you know what I mean? So we, we just learn that locked it down pretty quickly. I don't own the Roland anymore but when, when we were using it it, it literally took about a week to master it. I mean I, I'm sure that it, it was much more capable of doing a, a hell of a lot more than what we did with it but for the, for the sake of what we wanted to do for the beats we wanted to make uh, it didn't take that long I'd, I'd say like a few weeks. Uh, I think the Roland was the right piece of gear to um, basically pave the way to what I'm doing now Pretty much because of what I was saying before, mouse, big screen, you know, it it, it was perfect for someone like myself because I, I like to visualise what I'm making as well, you know, and, and and also when you're laying down cuts and stuff, you know, you, you like to kind of see it and it's just not nice to be able to play around with, with the stuff visually as, as well as obviously what you hear. Uh, the equipment I use now, um, I'm using an MPD32 as, as a you know, just to control and trigger the samples like you would on an MPC. I've got a, a MacBook Pro that I got about seven years ago. Really nice piece of kit. I'm uh, running Logic 8 on there. I've got um, I've got a uh, M Audio 410 sound card, which uh, it's got kind of a bit of a grimy sound. So I record everything from the tur uh, from the turntables, the rain mixer, straight into the sound card. Uh, if if I'm recording from digital sources. I've got a program called Soundflower which allows you to basically record in um, any any source from the computer. So basically I'll go from um, sound card in, and I'll record into uh, Soundtracks Pro and then from Soundtracks Pro I'll chop up the samples in Recycle and then from Recycle I'll put it into the ESX24 sampler in Logic and that automatically uh, 
basically puts the samples under on the pads and I've got I've got full transport control on the MP, MPD32 so you know I mean I pretty much use that as my uh, controller. The equipment I've used over the years uh, pretty much started with uh, using Cubase and the uh, the Roland sampler we were talking about and then I had a bit of a bit of a break and then I came back and uh, uh, Zygote and myself we had a uh, Akai S1000, Zygote used to love chopping stuff up on the screen, you know, so we used that. We used a sequencing program called Cakewalk Pro. Cakewalk Pro was one of the uh, first sequences which had unlimited undos. So for us, that was really good. So if you make a mistake, you know, you haven't lost all your work, you know, because it, it was always there. So you could go back a load, a load of steps, and uh, if, someone, if something was sounding better than your later sequence, you could go back. So we used that, and then uh, Logic kind of got that facility, so we were using Logic as I got, got an S5000, so we were using that setup. Um, I myself, I had an MPC2000, which I made a few beats on, but I didn't find it quick quick enough for me, really. I think with the software chopping stuff up, you know, I found it a lot a lot quicker. So, But for the actual programming of beats, I prefer software, obviously because there's a visual aspect to it. As long as your sample material is sounds a certain way, uh, software can sound as good as hardware, as I guess we've proven with the boot stuff, because it's all made on a computer. Uh, but, you know, you use certain samples, and a lot, a lot of it's recorded through, like, when we're at Zygotes, we've got a... Um, We've got a Mackie 24 8 disc, so stuff goes through there, you know, and uh, a lot of our stuff's mastered to tape, so to, to get that fat sound, you know what I mean, there's, there's loads of ways of doing it, and, and you can obtain that using software. Favourite brand of musical equipment, I would have to say, is probably... I, li I like the Akai stuff, uh, just because of functionality, really, style. It's kind of a part of hip-hop history, so when you're using a piece of Akai kit, you kind of... Um, using a bit of hip-hop history so f just for nostalgic reasons as well as functionality I'd say. The equipment I'd recommend to a beginner would probably be a good a good software sequencer and a decent controller. Um, it depends on the, wh where you're coming from. A lot of these new kids are so quick on computers and stuff that they're, they're thinking like a computer before they've even begun so I reckon with the modern way of thinking that would probably be what I'd recommend. But saying that, you know, you, you, you need to have a decent sound card, something that's got a decent, uh, decent analog to digital converters. So what you're putting in is pretty much what you're getting out. So that's a necessity as well, I'd say. And sample-wise, I'd, I'd recommend to always, always sample your drums from vinyl, and uh, then you know, the sky's your limit once you've got that lot. I chose software over hardware because of the uh, speed at which I found that I could use it. You know, like uh, hardware, I was messing about on a tiny screen. I found it quite frustrating. With software, the way I work, I'd have an idea and I can basically put pen to paper really quickly with software. Uh, hardware, there's a lot more to it. And also the routing of the sounds and stuff, there's a lot, there's a lot of wiring and stuff. You can get a lot of problems when you're plugging cables in, cables let you down, you know what I mean? pieces of equipment don't speak to other pieces of equipment you know it, I can do that and if that's the situation I'm in where I, you know I have to make something using hardware then I'll do that but software for me is just a lot quicker I can get my thoughts you know into, into practice a lot quicker uh, my views on sampling are that I think sampling is a great thing I, I, I think that basically without sampling the hip hop sound wouldn't be what it is now. You know, I think that's that's that that needs to be a part of our beats. You know, what I mean, I, I think in terms of drums, you, you can't really get a fat enough sound unless you're you know sampling from vinyl. I think. I mean, we have made tracks where either Zai or Mike Bandoni or Quake. You know, that, that, we've taken their drums, put them into the sample, chopped them up, and just using. As long as the stuff's recorded fat, then, then it will sound fat. But, but you know, sampling, I, I love it, you know. Uh, I don't specifically sample from vinyl. I mean, drums usually are pretty much always from vinyl or live. You know, actually recorded drums, as I was saying earlier. Um, in terms of other things, uh, you can sample DVDs, you know. like I wouldn't recommend sampling YouTube, but like HD stuff on there, you know, you can get a fat sound. Um, 
as long as it sounds fat, use it, you know what I mean? You know, if you hear something like a sound in nature, you know what I mean? Just get a mic, record that shit, you know what I mean? Just use that. So, so I mean, samples are everything, really. Uh, the genre I sample most, or have done in the past, was initially soundtracks. Uh, soundtracks always have a... They always give you... Um, what's the word? There's always atmosphere there, you know what I mean? And I think atmosphere is what kind of makes my beats different from a lot of other people's beats. Yeah. You know, it, it kind of in a place already, you know what I mean? When you sample a soundtrack. But since then, I, I kind of moved on to, uh, you know, I've also sampled a lot of jazz stuff. Not so much funk, funk drums, obviously, but you know, jazz stuff again, it's obviously I'm jazz tea, you know, so that, that that's always been a big influence on my sound, you know what I mean? So a lot of jazz stuff, but mainly jazz and soundtracks. Um, another style I got into was the electronic stuff but it's got to be quite, kind of old electronic stuff because the sound always depends on how the, how the records are recorded, you know what I mean? And a lot of newer electronic stuff, it just sounds a bit thin. Because they, yeah. There was kind of recording techniques through the 80s where the electronic, say, library records, for instance, just don't sound that fat, you know what I mean? Do I share my sample info with people? Um, I'd say pretty much no. Uh, I've got a group of producers that we all work together and if they want to know something then I'm going to tell them but in general I hold the samples down uh, you might catch our radio show and I might drop the record that I sampled but that's as far as it'll go with sharing I, I, I don't give out any titles you know I, I don't try and bait up because a lot of people talk about their samples and who, they, who they've sampled etc and I, I don't think that's good for the scene especially like if you're selling music in America you know what I mean because you've got this whole like Oh yeah, they use my record. I'm going to sue them. Da, 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 you know, and I don't want to get involved in that. It's all about being covert. You know what I mean? Just undercover with it. Right? How do I get my samples? Uh, I'd say primarily uh, digging. Uh, Guildford, where I work, uh, we've got five record shops. You know what I mean? Two of them are second-hand record shops. One of them I work in. And so th th there's an abundance of dope wax always coming in and out of there so if you go into those shops at the right time you'll, you'll find good stuff so I, I, I'm pretty much always digging there um, also I have a friend who just knows everything so he's always putting me onto new stuff and uh, I'll go on the on the web and just pick stuff up from Discogs or whatever eBay um, whenever I'm doing shows and stuff I endeavour to reach the record shops in those areas you know what I mean like overseas as well there's some dope spots in um, Denmark I've got Denmark now and again because I've got family over there so there's some wicked jazz shops there that I pick stuff up from uh, a few times I've been to like uh, Vegas there's, there's a wicked shop run by this uh, Jewish cat from Brooklyn it's got a sick shop you know what I mean so my, my, my main source of samples is um, vinyl but if I'm watching DVDs and I see like dope film and there's some bits of that you know what I mean obviously that's you know I'll sample that you know what I mean or, so uh, YouTube not so much I mean like, like I was saying earlier, with, with HD YouTube videos, uh, you can sample stuff off YouTube. I mean, when it comes to maybe dialogue for cuts and stuff, yeah, not a problem. As, as long as it sounds fat, again, that, that, that's basically the bottom line with me. If it sounds fat, then I will sample it. Right, my favourite sampler and my favourite software, I'd say, in terms of the sampler, it has to be the um, ESX24 on Logic because of just the ease of use, I can chop stuff up in a recycle and just dump it straight in the ESX24 and it's there, key groups on the um, on the sampler straight away, minimal hassle. Uh, again, favourite software I'd have to say is Logic. I'm using Logic 8 at the moment, we've used Logic 9. Um, when we use PCs, Logic 5.5.1 is a wicked program, wicked sequencer. Uh, in terms of editing software, I'd say uh, Soundforge, Sony Soundforge is wicked. PC version, Mac version's a bit whack. Uh, and I, I kind of like Soundtracks Pro as well, uh, which is uh, it comes with Logic, it's a wicked editing program. So, samples of drums, what's, what's more important to me when I'm making a beat? Uh, it really depends on the sample or the drums. Certain, certain drum patterns, they, they uh, basically create a picture of a track. So, you know, there's certain times I'll, I'll lay down the drums and I'll lay down some percussion on top of the drums and you, you kind of, the bass line kind of comes to you and, uh, and you know, you can make the beat like that. 
other times that there'll be a, like an ill loop and uh, you, it's kind of got drums in there already so you're just like overlaying drums over the loop so it, and then and then you might you might take some simps and stuff and just reinforce the loop you know what I mean so it's it, it really depends on the individual sample or, or drum loop you know what I mean there's no set formula to the way I do stuff you know this really really isn't it, it completely depends on the sample right in terms of MPCs what what are the best current or retro models uh, I guess old school would be the MPC 60 I mean I don't really actually have much experience of that but from people like Jest and uh, couple other guys that I know they, they they say the sound of the MPC 60 was the one so I guess that's that in terms of like modern day uh, Apollo he's saying that the Ren is a dope machine uh, Jess also saying that uh, and uh, Park is using his uh, what, what was it 1000 so I mean I'd say like the 1000 and the MPC 60 really well my two favorite instruments would have to be the turntables which people can say uh, is that an instrument yes it is an instrument and uh, probably the bass you know what I mean which I can't play the bass but I, I will learn how to play the bass I mean I reckon uh, if, if I needed to play notes and record them to uh, as part of making a beat I can do that but I can't actually play the bass but turntables obviously like I'm you know my generation paved the way for the turntables to be an instrument so now you, you can pretty much play any instrument on the turntable so yeah I see the turntable as an instrument and that's my instrument. Uh, if I could learn to play any instrument uh, I'd, I'd have to say well it'd be two, there'd be the bass that I mentioned before uh, because I, I think just making ill bass lines on a bass guitar would be you know it, it would be a skill that would help me a lot uh, and I'd love to play the drums as well I just love the the way a drummer just you know they, they just see space and they just fill gaps with different things you know like take Quake for instance you know he'll be drumming he'll be like triggering samples at the same time you know what I mean if there's a if there's space you know what I mean they, they can utilize that you know they they split their body into four and just can control things like that you know what I mean I like that that's that's why I'd be into the drums because I think as a human being you know you don't really get more sort of uh, dexterous than that you know what I mean. If I could work with two producers, if I could handpick two producers to come here and work on a joint, uh, I'd have to say probably Danny Brakes, who's a UK cat, but I just think his the way he uses analog equipment is just inspiring to me. You know what I mean? And his sound is wicked. Um, he used to make drum and bass, and he's a hip hop producer as well. He does instrumental stuff, so a lot of people might not know him, but yeah, he's sick. Uh, US wise I'd, I'd have to say like Madlib really because uh, the reason I say Madlib is because he can flip samples, he can flip like simps, you know what I mean, he's just, he can use any sampler, you know what I mean, it's just inspirational, I like the way that cat works and I like his body of work, you know what I mean, so for me that, that, they'd be the, the two, you know, and, and those two cats I'd just be making music like, you know what I mean. If I could handpick two MCs to make tracks with, I'd have to say uh, probably Doom because I just like the I like the way he can pretty pretty much um, rhyme over any kind of beat, you know what I mean? And and the, the pictures he paints, you know, are quite inspirational. Um, UK wise, probably Roots Maneuver because um, I just think I could do some bangers with him, you know what I mean? I, I think the kind of beats that I make, you know what I mean? If I was working with him, we could make some special shit, you know what I mean? Right, my top three producers, which is probably going to be more than three producers, uh, I'd say are probably Zygo, my partner Zygo. I mean, he he can basically make anything. You know, if I'm working with him, I can say we need to do it like this, and he'll instantly do it. You know what I mean? I mean, that's that's just talent, man. And like the stuff, the strange you stuff, the house stuff he's doing. Just yeah, he's he's just uh, he's just an amazing producer. Um, Another guy that I really love, uh, Prince Paul, man. He's probably you know my favourite of all time. You know the, the stuff he did with Dana, the Grave Diggers stuff. You know what I mean his solo albums. I mean he 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 can just take like a comical like kiddie sample and just make it into ill hip hop. You know what I mean? And uh, just have some dark MC over the top and just the contrast in the material he uses to to make hard tracks like inspires me. Um, 
Who else? I mean, Premier, he's, he's another classic, you know what I mean? I, I, I like the way that, you know, he can use just like dusty samples or he can use more like cleaner stuff, you know what I mean? And it, it, it always bangs, you know what I mean? That, that, that's pretty inspirational. Again, Madlib, um, I know I mentioned him before, but um, just everything that he does, you know, like he, could, he, can, he can make a jazz track, he can make a house track, he can make a broken beat track, he can make an ill hip hop album. He can make a West Coast sounding album. He can make an East Coast sounding album. His understanding of music is just like second to none. You know what I mean? There, there are very few people that can pretty much do everything. You know what I mean? And he's one of them. Right, who, who am I feeling right at the moment? Um, I'd say hip hop wise, uh, that's a damn good question. No, I'm, I'm loving a lot of what Michael Parkinson and the Jester are doing um, as producers. You know, I think they got some raw sound going on there. Um, other genres, I'd say in the dubstep type thing, Mala. Mala's a very inspirational producer. I think, you know, he's a raster man, you know what I mean? He's, he just drops some ill beats, you know what I mean? Uh, also, I like people like D-Bridge on the drum and bass kind of tip, autonomic kind of stuff, really into that. Um, yeah, those are the cats that are really doing it for me at the moment. Apart from the guys that I've mentioned already, like, there, there isn't that much coming out of the States. I oh, know there is another cat, King Honey. I don't know if he's doing anything at the moment, but he did the Victor Vaughan albums and stuff. He, he was killer. I mean, he was another cat that could just take some like electronic stuff and just blend it with some like dusty samples and just come up with some magic. You know what I mean? So yeah, I think those are the guys that are really at the moment are doing it for me. <laughs> I think the first thing is to understand what jazz musicians actually do. Right, this is the first joint I'm showing you. Uh, it's a track called Run the Changes. Um, basically, Quake Bass, who's the drummer for Doom and used to be the drummer for the Jess Band and Speakers Corner Quartet. Um, we were touring with the Jess Band and I said, look man, we need to do a track together for my album. Um, and he basically sorted, sorted out um, a load of drum samples for me that he'd, he'd uh, recorded down in his basement and uh, I chopped them up, found a section that I could use for the track and basically looped it up and then uh, built around it. Uh, so all the drums and percussion you can hear is Quake. I, I basically split it up, um, beefed up the different uh, you know, the kicks, the hats, the stairs and stuff, um, EQ'd them, made them sound like a bit more so tighter. Um, and then I found a, a sample on an old VCM jazz record which uh, basically went perfectly with it. Um, also, I hooked up the uh, micro cork down there and I played the, the kind of key sounds that you can hear in the background there, that's, that's me on there. And then uh, I've got a load of old dialogue from jazz interviews and just cut it up over the top. But this is kind of the title track for my album, it's called Run the Changes. So I was quite pr proud of this one, it's more of a jazz track, you know what I mean? Same time that word can be used as a verb. You can cut someone, you can destroy them musically, make them look embarrassed. Right, this next joint is a remix I did of a Tim Dog track that I made from my original LP. This is a sample we used. Yeah, so basically I used that loop, put some mill drums, I can't remember what drums I used, but I know I sampled them off a 45, um, just had that real sort of Bronx feel to it, you know what I mean? Uh, the original was uh, the beat that me and Zai made, so I just took the Tim Dog verse, put it over this, and this is going on my new album as well. You ain't a pimp, you ain't a dog, kind of gangster you ain't a hustler. Hustler. That's why these record labels won't fuck with you. Well, look at me, I'm the D.O.G. Fifteen years in the game, Woo! niggas wanna still sign me. Still behind me, still behind me. Right, this next track is uh, another track from my album, Run The Changes. Uh, basically used another ECM loop. It's got my man J-Zone from New York on there. Remember back in the day, man? I've basically taken a loop, I sort of 
beefed up the drums. It's really a loop-based beat, you know what I mean? I didn't do a hell of a lot more to it. Basically chopped it up, replayed it in there, and then played the drums over the top. I never learned French when I went to France, but I learned making dollars takes common sense. Thought it would be about flows and escargots and meeting a badass bitch and busting nuts on the nose. One great show, Paris took it to the head. Me, Al Sheet, and Jazz shared a room with one bed. Don't ask how the fuck we did it. I just needed a place to take a shit. Never mind. It's pretty simple stuff, but again, a lot, a lot, for me, a lot of the skill is in just getting a loop, which just maintains for like the whole three minutes of the track. So that's that one. Right, this next track is basically um, it's all live instruments, made it completely of live instruments. Uh, basically played in, chopped up, obviously put into the sampler and, and played back in on the sampler. Um, I've got my man Mike, ben Mike Bandoni from Function on the Keys. Uh, I've got my daughter Mia doing the shakers. Um, I've got Zygo on the drums. Mike also did some drums on there. Uh, and I've got Biscuit from Speaker's Corner Quartet on the flutes. Um, I've done a little, little bit of cutting on there. I'm also going to get DJ Random and John first to do some stuff on this. Um, basically, it was, it was a challenge to make like live instruments sound like samples, you know what I mean? And uh, I think we kind of pulled it off here. But, but it's also kind of gives the album a bit of an in, interlude from all the rapping, you know what I mean? Because most of the album is... Um, Rhymes, you know what I mean? So to have a few instrumentals on there, like, kind of meant a lot to me. Just for the sort of, for the listeners, really. That's basically the drum break I use on this next tune. Uh, this is a track, it's got bad bones on the vocals. I think we're probably going to do a different version of this, so this is probably the only time anyone's going to hear this version. Uh, this beat actually kind of was one of the beats that inspired the whole album. I made like three beats and, and then I kind of built the album from there. But uh, let's go with this one. So basically you've got the drum break. Uh, you got that kind of woodblock kind of percussion in the background. Again, that was another sound which kind of drove the beat. Um, I've got that bit of bass line from a, a, an old obscure European jazz record. Drum um, rolls obviously off that break, but it kind of worked nicely. You can hear that electronic stuff in the background, that's from like um, an old German synthesizer group, I'm not going to say who, but it's basically a record that used to be a lot to me and my stepdad, you know, we used to listen to it in the car a lot, you know what I mean? So to be able to use that and this meant quite a lot to me. But that, like, that breaks like a shit one pound record, you know what I mean? So to turn it into something like this, again, it sort of kind of meant something special to me. Right, this next one, again, is from the Run the Changes album. Um, this is the original loop that I used. Uh, I added some drums to it and stuff, but yeah, check this. When I pitched it down, it had that kind of mad groove to it, you know what I mean? Metal on metal, the feet button clicking on the beat from the downstairs. You hear the plate skipping, listen closer. See the square sleeves. I basically the added the drums over the top, and it just got that real crazy broken kind of feel to it. Just felt, again, I felt the album needed this kind of stuff, you know what I mean? So if you listen to like group home albums like Dark and D shit, you know, there's always a joint like this, you know what I mean? In the vinyl, it just seems it's important just to keep middle finger dipping in the black pool and slick wet. Make your drum and the ears interested in the jeans, Billy Squire, black grass, that's forever. And it goes on science in the crunch, six boots on. I think there's another one sample that comes in. Names getting known now. I 
rice on the crates on the table Soak them in the broth just to take away the labels Salute Edison, scientific American And on this one obviously Capo comes with some like real crazy like outlook on DJs you know what I mean like pretty much taking the thing about DJs where no one, no one ever has before and that's that Right, this next one, this is a track called The Lesson, which again is from my album Run The Changes. Uh, it's produced by Zygo and myself. Um, it's got Jess, features Jess and Jaeger. Let's just spin this. Uh, basically, got the drums from an obscure private press rock record. Um, the Luke is basically made out of some soundtrack ish, just replayed it. Zygo did a crazy detuning of the kick drums like to kind of create the bass line when it changes up and stuff and like so you can hear the crazy percussion in the background again proper aggy track you know what I mean kind of sounds a bit like an old uh, group home thing even, you know what I mean but it wasn't intentional it just kind of came out like that Done the cuts and the crosses and stuff. Right, this next one is from Capo the Boot EP, produced by myself and Zygo again. Um, some some like sixties cop show type thing. Uh, this is like the title joint from the EP. Um, this one's called Yul Brynner. We've got um, some crazy film samples. Samples from like our TV series and stuff. Mm. I'm giving you an order, Mr. Gray. Kind of sets the atmosphere. Blow it out of your ass, Colonel. Always oh, kind of man. I'm not Mr. Bit of humor to it as well. I once had a man shot for talking to me like that. that, that. Use kind of a classic break on this, so like some of the crate pickers might be able to work out what it is. Got a nice soundtrack feel to it, kind of replayed in the bass line and stuff. Got that off key kind of boot, boot, boot cushion in the background as well. Yeah, we only did a hundred copies of this in 20 TVs and they all sold out. So it was like quite a collectible record. Right, now I'm just going to run through how I'd normally make a, a beat basically. Um, so the first thing I'll do, obviously sample the, the drums in this case. So I'm recording into the program called Soundtracks Pro. So for sake of this, I've already got the drums in here recorded and looped. Now from Soundtracks Pro, I'd normally go into uh, Recycle. Let's sort of get up here. Recycle is the program where I, you can basically chop the drums up in Recycle, which kind of saves you having to do it on a just small screen on a M MPC or SP. Like, um, I mean, you've got a massive waveform here, so for me it's just perfect because I can actually see exactly where uh, all the peaks and troughs are, so I can get it really precise. Which sometimes it's just a bit more difficult when you do it like by by ear. That's, other people like it that way, but for me personally. So I'm not going to show you the drums on, on here, I'm just going to show you the actual loop that I'm using on the beat. So I've kind of chopped it, chopped it up. You can hear the different slices there. And from Recycle, I basically dump the Recycle file into the ESX24 sampler and that automatically kind of key groups it out on here. So I'll just hide this. Right now, this... This is the beat we're talking about. See, how, see, I've got all the parts on the MP there. Uh, on this particular beat, I started it off with a, a, a little audio section from a like a crazy avant-garde jazz track. So basically, I play it from the top. <laughs> The 
That's the loop. The swap. That's as well as you take the music. Drums. What the play? In this particular track, I've got like five samples over the top because it's uh, part of the intro to the album. So. I'll kind of finish off with a bit of um, it's like an outro again using audio stuff. It's a good thing with uh, Logic, obviously, you can mix the audio and the, uh, the sampled stuff. Um, that's basically the best basic essence of what I do. I mean, obviously, on that beat, it just had the two elements the loop and the, the drums, but you can add what you want. You know, I can add like Simpson stuff on top of that, and more more tracks or samples but on that particular track it was just the two tracks so that's basically my working pattern there